Every so often, games will come around that fly under the radar, even though they're highly deserving of some praise. But then you have instances where a game flies so far beneath our radars that nobody will ever realize it's actually a Trojan horse of near perfection until they stumble onto it. That game is 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Before we get deeper into it all, this will mostly be a spoiler-free review. Any major spoilers that lie past the prologues will be saved until the very end, so if you're still wondering whether or not you should pick this game up, no worries, you're safe. Beyond that, I actually was provided a digital review copy of this game by Atlas West, and I can't thank them enough for that, but midway through my play session, I actually went ahead and bought my own physical copy, as I always prefer physical discs over download, but also I genuinely feel this game deserves way more support within the market. But the question still remains, what even is this game? Before we get into all that though, this video is proudly sponsored by Exter. Exter makes slim, innovative, high quality, and best of all, trackable wallets for those who never want to fear losing it. The tracker is solar powered, and you can even ring it from your phone in case you need to quickly locate your wallet. It's also globally trackable, so as long as it's on our planet, it should be easy enough to find. Heck, I've lived with my mom long enough that I might as well put one of these trackers on all of her stuff because they're just that convenient. My personal favorite feature also has to be the pop-out card mechanism, which lets you quickly grab any one of your cards from the row, and to be honest, it's just addicting and cool as heck to see them pop out like this. There's actually a Black Friday sale going on right now, and if you click on the link in the description, not only will you get up to a 25% discount in your purchase, but it also helps support me and the channel. Again, click the link below to get yourself a wallet of your own, and thanks to Exter for sponsoring this video. Back on track though, we have to ask, what is 13 Sentinels and why should we care about it? Trust me, I watched a good few trailers for this game before it launched and still had absolutely no clue what I was watching, but I'm going to break it down in the simplest way possible. 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim is a game published by Atlas and developed by Vanillaware, the latter best known for making games such as Odin's Fear and Dragon's Crown. It's also a game that released in September of 2020, like two months before this video dropped. NOBODY HEARD ABOUT THIS! Let's change that though. In regards to the gameplay, the game is split into two portions. The core of the game, known as Remembrance, is a side-scrolling social simulator where you advance through the intersecting plots and timelines of 13 separate protagonists. In this, you'll talk to other characters, ponder on new information you've learned, and sometimes puzzle your way through looping events in order to reach new story beats. The other half, named Destruction, is a blend between a tactical RPG and a tower defense game, where you fight against hordes of kaiju of various shapes and sizes with an array of unique fighting methods and abilities. Both are incredibly stylized and executed wonderfully, but I'm getting ahead of myself with the praise. One immediate thing that I have to note is the visuals. It's not your typical 3D game, instead vying for a 2D approach with 3D elements. Every character is beautifully drawn, with more than enough detail in every expression, walk cycle, and even how they stand around thinking to themselves. Especially Natsuno, I love her, look at this girl smile, tell me you don't want to rip this game off your store shelves right now. There's an excessive amount of depth and care that went into the look of this game, even with how the lighting blooms onto all of the characters so naturally, and the 3D overworlds feel hardly out of place next to the player characters. Look at this, he goes to grab the papers from the desk, and now he's holding the papers! This is the peak of art right here, ladies and gentlemen. We've made it. My praise of the visuals includes the destruction portion, which I was initially somewhat confused and irritated by when I looked at it, because seriously, what the frick is that? But once I finished the tutorial phase and actually registered what I was looking at, it's a gorgeous and stunning scale of these mech battles that you'll be participating in. Every 3D wobbling mesh of the Daimos, the kaiju of this world, gives off a distinct and memorable presence, and even the small ones that are mostly recognizable as glowing whites of varying colors are still clear enough to make a satisfying target for whatever missile barrage you fancy. They'll be okay. As stated before, there are 13 main protagonists, a feat which many games in the past such as Octopath Traveler have attempted to make work, yet most often fall flat in one way or another. This isn't a slight to Octopath Traveler though, play that too cowards. However, 13 Sentinels didn't fail once to make me fall in love with every single character in this cast, and it always granted a unique lens into their perspective that endeared me to their philosophies and struggles. Each prologue chapter gives a clear look at who everyone is, while also establishing their place and purpose in the timeline in an easy to follow way. Actually, I keep mentioning that term timeline when discussing the plot, because this game is not only about time travel, 
but it's also non-linear. And by non-linear, I mean that every character plot is non-linear. This sounds like it's the most confusing and ridiculous plot to follow, and it probably would have been if the writing and pacing of the story wasn't so fantastically crafted. Don't get me wrong, the actual plot is pretty complex and takes a while to fully wrap your head around what's happening in the grand scheme of things, but the way information is delivered is balanced so you'll always be given some new bombshell of information, whilst also cluing you into how everything ties together. It sounds like a lot to take in, which may turn some of you off, but it's honestly not too difficult to follow along the plot as it goes to the lengths to clarify things in a clear light whenever it's needed. Which makes sense since, you know, every character in this game is 16, meaning most of them have baby brains. The complexity doesn't come from how confusing the plot is, but rather how many moving pieces it balances and utilizes in the most efficient way possible. No characters are underutilized, aside from one or two throwaway characters, meaning your engagement and investment within the cast is highly rewarded the further you get into the game. Backtracking a bit though, one thing I adore about this game is how it starts players off, as it's emblematic of how well they've handled the storytelling of the game, as well as how much they made sure fans would be able to naturally get roped into the flow of gameplay. The game begins towards the tail end of the timeline, where the final battle begins. This gives a strong anchor for players to keep in mind, as they know that the story is leading towards this one mysteriously intense moment. It leads you through a simple progression of tutorial fights, each one giving you a grasp of the different enemies and fighting styles in a safe and welcoming way as to not alienate new players. Interspersed between these battles are seven prologue chapters, where you'll play the start of seven separate character stories in a way that's meant to build up the mystery and depth of this world in an easily digestible way you know, before the game decides to shatter your brain with even more mysteries later. This little taste of what's to come isn't anything wholly original, nor did I expect it to be, but it serves as a fantastic starting lap to a game I was already skeptical about from the start. This all heads into the most amazing thing I've ever seen in my life. Something which has never been done before, ever, not once, a true revolution of game design. You actually get to set your difficulty after you've played some of the game. All joking aside, I absolutely appreciate the game for easing players into the flow of battle before asking them to pick their difficulty. It's a simple feature, but so many games throw their players into a wholly new setting and ask, do you want to die tonight? Trust me, we all remember the western release of Radiant Dawn, never picking normal mode again. Once the tutorial is finished, you're essentially left to tackle the game in whatever way you please. Want to experience the character stories? Jump into Remembrance and play whomever you're interested in. Want to delve into some short bursts of action? Destruction is right there for you. But even then, there's a third option that I appreciate more than anything else, that being the mode known as Analysis. Not only does this feature a massive, constantly expanding library for every piece of lore and history for this game, known as Mystery Files, but it also contains an enormous timeline that houses every cutscene and event in the game. This chronicle is insane. Not only does it order everything in a comprehensive way for players trying to piece together events, but it also lets you view the individual timelines of every major character, making their own story paths infinitely easier to follow. Beyond that, though I wouldn't call this a spoiler per se, skip to this point if you don't want details on the unlockables once you beat this game. But... Once the final boss concludes, you gain access to even more timelines, so literally every character in the game with a remotely substantial role gets their story broken down in a clear way. Except for Miwako. I'm so sorry, Bibi. As someone who loves diving headfirst into the lore and mechanics of the stories I adore, the analysis section of this game is a dream come true for players like me. The only thing I'd say is missing would be the ability to access the game's soundtrack from within the game itself. But I've already been spoiled enough, so do I really need to whine about that? The UI for this game is clean and effective, from the consistently easy to navigate menus to the in-game layouts that only show as much info as is needed by the player. Again, nothing groundbreaking, but there are plenty of games who aren't strangers to assaulting your eyes with whatever this is. Screw talking about menus and lore though, this is a game! Let's talk about the game! Starting with the destruction portion, because we're saving the best for last, I will admit that this is far from the best part of the game. Though on that note, THESE BATTLES ARE FUN AS HECK! <coughs> I, I, uh, I really like them. The battles in this game are these addictive, bite-sized endurance tests that I personally can't get enough of. 
They're not necessarily difficult on the normal difficulty as you'd expect, but they give just enough of a challenge to where you're rewarded for your focus. Getting an S rank for each fight is simple on this difficulty, meaning if you desire more of a challenge, obviously boot it higher, and if you request the opposite, you can breeze through these fights with ease on baby mode. We won't judge ya, no worries. In regards to the fights themselves though, you pilot up to 6 sentinel pilots at a time, with the rest of your team serving as an automatic defensive force on your terminal. The goal is simple. Don't let the scary bug robots stick their pincers into your wormhole, and you win. That sounded a lot more suggestive than I intended. Each pilot has a select list of moves they can choose from, and it's easy to learn and grow used to all of their functions. You can upgrade all of these with the game's in-game, in-lore currency, and improve both your weapons and the sentinels themselves. Looking at these menus is kind of overwhelming at first, but they're unlocked at enough of a respectful pace as to not bombard the player with too much information. Using these weapons feels sufficiently satisfying in basically any case that isn't one of the really mediocre bullet sprays. Seriously, never use those, they're usually a bad idea, but still, the combat has a weight to it that always got a grin out of me. You can most often attack multiple enemies at once, with a few specific exceptions, though later on in the game you'll have to pay attention to what units should be focused first, and beyond that, who you can attack at any given moment. Each pilot also levels up over the course of battles, unlocking character-specific abilities that are useful to consider and reveal personality traits of the pilots that kill me every time. Like, Hamaguchi gets objectively stronger when you put more women on the team. I can't with this boy! Moving your sentinels around the battlefield can occasionally feel a little slow depending on the unit, which is understandable as most of them are super clunky by design, and only a fourth of your team can fly, though there are also ways to get around this with certain units like the Gen 1 sentinels and... You know, this started as a critique when writing this, but it's actually what we in the business like to call good game design. One thing that may actually be a downside for players, however, is that the game does slightly lag when targeting 50 billion enemies at once, or when launching a storm of missiles. I've actually seen theories that this was intentional, and that it causes the player to feel the gravitas of how much destruction they're causing. It's not. This is just because the PS4 can't handle your missile spam, but I understand the hustle. Every time the game lags, it makes me feel like a living god too. The lag isn't all that bad in my eyes, I completely didn't care, but again, that's for you to judge while playing. Overall though, the way battles amp up over time and reveal new lore details for players to uncover is satisfying, entertaining, and gives the thread of the story a certain weight that couldn't be as phenomenally achieved otherwise. Speaking of, the story! For anyone who's familiar with my channel, it's beyond apparent that Persona 5, particularly the royal variant of the game, is my favorite game of all time. It has some of my favorite characters in fiction, and probably my favorite narrative of any game I've played. So on that note, 13 Sentinels has the best plot of any game I've ever played. Don't get me wrong, I love me some P5R, but there's a difference between a narrative and a plot. The former being more so about the way the story is delivered and the weight it's given, while plot is more so referring to the actual events within the story itself. And, who boy, this game's plot is the equivalent of a Stephen Hawking fever dream. In a good way. Basically, all my Persona and Atlas fans should strap in because this is some grade A storytelling. Did I mention you should buy this game? You should buy this game. I won't delve into spoilers until stated otherwise, but the general premise of this game is simple. You control 13 separate protagonists, all with the mysterious ability to summon mechas to fight the invasion of Kaiju. The main story takes place before the main invasion, where each plot winds through separate timelines in a rarely linear fashion, all of it building towards the game's final climax. Each plot seems to reference various aspects of pop culture, celebrating the sci-fi genre and fiction as a whole, with some subtle and non-subtle nods to stories like War of the Worlds, E.T., Looper, and... Madoka Magica? Never mind, I don't think I like this game anymore, now I'm just scared. It's incredibly hard to pick an absolute favorite or least favorite character from this cast. All of them are written with wholly unique personalities, goals, and important roles within the story. Including my favorite girl, Tomi. I love her. Okay, maybe I have a favorite after all. You can't have a character voiced by Cassandra Lee Morris and expect me to not love them. The directing on some of these stories is top-notch, one of my favorites being Ryoko's, where her dwindling psyche and mental state is visualized in these gorgeously tense breakdowns, always needing a moment to relieve herself before things can ease up. Never mind, she might be my favorite. The comedy, when implemented, is also unparalleled. Basically every time Nenji spoke, I was either cheering him on for his determination, or falling over with laughter. Okay, maybe he's my favorite. 
Do you see the problem with this game? The moment I actually start to discuss these characters in any detail, they immediately shoot up in favoritism. Though the other surface level issue here is that, other than the vague mention of time travel, kaiju, and mechs, I can't really discuss much of the plot without spoiling it, so this next portion is basically just meant for those who have either beaten the game already, or simply don't care enough to play it and want to know the story. If you're part of those who don't care, turn off the video and buy this game. Seriously, it's that good. And the constant twists and turns of events are so fantastic that you're doing yourself a disservice by not simply jumping into this game right away. On that note, spoilers in 3, 2, 1. Okay. Are they gone? I think they're gone. TIME TRAVEL ISN'T REAL! In all seriousness, the way they use the concept of time travel as a facade for this even more complex yet rich system of lore is phenomenal. The early game shows these visions of characters from the past or seemingly the future, all committing these alarming acts of altering things to stop the eventual apocalypse. It's then ingenious when you recognize that these individuals are simply leftovers from past loops, aka the resets in the world simulation. This building narrative about an ancient civilization trying their hardest to resurrect humanity after its own self-destruction is so intriguing, especially as more malicious and all-knowing forces start to weave their way into the plot, such as Ida, Chihiro, and that stupid cat that won't get off my television, I swear! This twist on the time travel formula, and most sci-fi stories in general, gives the tale an interesting dynamic to pursue, all combining into a fittingly intense final act with multiple loops making it difficult to discern who's actually the antagonist, especially with how mysterious the Sentinels and Daimos truly are to the player until the very end, I was always on edge as to where the story would head. It truly is one of the best sci-fi stories ever told. And that's it with the major spoilers. Just had to get that out, so now we wait for our non-spoilery friends, and... Welcome back! Let's end this review like I ended that plate of yakisoba I got with my brother after beating this game. Seriously, if there's one thing I can praise this game for, it was making me realize that I'd somehow never eaten yakisoba before, and it tastes like heaven. Hijiyama might have been onto something. It's genuinely upsetting to see how poorly this game is sold as of now. In fact, my friend Spencer over on Shimigami Tensei Network recently went over how poorly this game has performed, so send him some love after you watch this. Still, this game should not be slept on. Initially, I looked at it and didn't think the $60 was an appropriate price, but for how much there is within this package, it's more than deserving of a full price release. If Persona 5 Royal wasn't my religion, this would be an easy pick for my game of the year, and it's officially my second favorite game of all time. I'm just going to snugly push aside Shadow of the Colossus, and bam, second place has been overtaken. Every member of the cast is phenomenal, with a story that took me on a roller coaster I'll never forget. And even concluding with an ending that, to my complete surprise, is insanely satisfying and doesn't leave a single loose end unchecked. The battles are quick but satisfying jaunts of power and skill that will make you forget that they canonically take place over the course of two minutes, and the depth of the battle system is just enough to make players feel the impact they have on their customization without overwhelming them. Finally, the game chronicles everything you could possibly wish to revisit as a player in the most organized way possible, while also giving fun insight to those who put in the time to explore every crevice of the game. This is a game that cares about the player who's willing to invest time into it, and I don't think another game of this magnitude will be swinging our way for a while. The developers themselves stated that this was a passion project that they likely won't be able to replicate with the same level of depth in the future, so I'm glad to support this magnum opus of theirs. So that's all my major praise that I can fit into this video without rambling for years. In terms of critique, um, Megami makes me uncomfortable, I guess? That's intentional, though. I also kind of wish that we got to see proper cutscenes for the 2188 events, but that's also intentional. I don't think I have any real complaints. Huh. You should, um, buy this game. Now! I don't like review scores and whatnot, but if I had to rank this game... I don't know. A plus, 10 out of 10, S rank, a broken marriage out of 10, just BUY THE GAME ALREADY! Oh gosh, this was a long time coming, but I'm finally back in business. Season 2 was intended to begin a lot sooner, but with some life stuff swinging by, it kinda got pushed back. I think there may be a pattern between me making videos on that godforsaken Persona Palace and me actually uploading afterwards, I swear. What's new in Season 2? I, uh, I have a room now. That's it. Have fun looking for secrets in here.
Still, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed my first attempt at a proper review format. Any critique or suggestions are greatly appreciated, so make sure to spam your thoughts down below. Thanks once again to Exter for sponsoring this video, as they've been super kind and helpful while making this. The wallet they sent is genuinely super cool and helpful, so once again, use that link down below and get yourself one on discount while you have the chance. Speaking of discounts, I'm uploading this on Black Friday, and 13 Sentinels is actually on sale for 30 bucks. This is less than half of what it's worth, but please show your support and nab a copy if you can. Seriously, buy this freaking game. The game also just got nominated for Best Narrative at the Game Awards, which is insane. Doubt it'll win against IGN's favorite sadness simulator, but here's hoping for the best. But yeah, thanks to all of you, and especially thanks to my patrons for helping keep the channel running behind the scenes. Show them some love as well. But that should be it. More stuff to come in the future, so until then, stay safe, get that bread, and kiss your wife. She needs the affection. I may be just a schoolgirl, but now I'm a schoolgirl with a giant robot!